Hi, good morning. Barely. <laughs> for those of you who know me, welcome back. Thank you for showing up again. For those of you who don't, my name is Sam. It's very nice to meet you. What I like to do is sit here and do my makeup and talk about a haunting story or a ghost story that affects me or someone else's maybe eventually. Right now, I don't really have any more super long stories that I can remember. There's a lot in there, but it's all jumbled. So what I wanted to do today was talk about a bunch of different experiences I've had as a child that I remember. And like some of these experiences, I should have been way too young to remember, but I guess like the fear of God was put in me, right? Because I remember them. <laughs> I remember them very clearly. I already prepped my skin and did my eyebrows because these stories aren't particularly long and I don't particularly want to just like run out of story and then have like 30 minutes of makeup. And my eyebrows are difficult. They're very difficult for me. They're blonde, they're op, you know, my face isn't perfectly symmetric, so it's not <laughs> gonna work. So I just did it off camera, came back, and I hope you like it. The first story I'm going to tell you guys about is when I was literally a baby. Again, I don't know how I remember this. I really don't, but I do. My first experience was something that's like unnatural or unknown or just whatever, is my mom's old Howdy Doody doll. Now, this doll, if you don't know what it looks like, it is like a marionette puppet that looks like a little country boy, I guess, from the 50s. I don't know. He looks horrifying. It's like when you look up pictures from like 1930 and you're like, oh, I wonder what their Halloween costumes look like. Yeah, that's what this doll looked like. And I've always just had a bad feeling about it. My mom still has it. My mom still has it and she loves it. It's her favorite thing. It brings her a lot of comfort and joy. But to me, all I remember is just fear, absolute fear. I also have a reoccurring nightmare about this doll that I had every day for like years. It was awful. When I was a baby, I remember being at my grandfather's old house in Pennsylvania and it was old so it was already kind of weird and stuff like that and I remember being put in a crib in this blue room. I asked my mom about this room later, I described it to her and she said it was her old bedroom. So my mom put me in a crib in her old bedroom and I was in there alone. And she came back in at one point and brought in the Howdy Doody doll. She didn't really know my fear of it at this point. I was too young to really communicate it. I remember, like, I didn't really show fear in an outburst way when it came to it. I was just kind of like, you know, like just deer in headlights. Well, I remember laying there and just not feeling okay. Like, just feeling like nice just feeling like something was watching me something was gonna like hurt me it's kind of like when you know something is like creepy but you don't know why and you're just like uneasy you know you're just uneasy and you can't take your eye off it because you're just like i know you're gonna fucking move as soon as i look away you're gonna be gone and then i'm gonna turn around and you're gonna be behind me nope i don't want to be snuck up on okay no, 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 oops, dropping everything today, by the way, and it's very, very frustrating, get those wands out of there, anyway, so I'm sitting at the bottom of this crib, my mom brings it in, and I just remember sitting there being like, I can't look away from this thing, if I look away from this thing, it is going to move it's going to move and like i don't know how old it was i had to be in a toddler right i was still in a crib i don't know i don't know my mom's parent exile but like you know i just i shouldn't be remembering this but i just remember laying there staring at it horrified and then i was really tired and i accidentally closed my eyes and i remember thinking as a child like this is it like if you close your eyes now you can't reopen them because if you do, that doll's gonna, you're gonna open your eyes and that doll's gonna be like right in your face, like ready to eat you alive. And 
I don't remember, like, I was never exposed to, like, scary movies until much later in life. My mom wasn't really a scary movie person. So it's not like I, like, saw Chucky or something and then, like, was afraid of dolls. Like, it wasn't every doll. Well, now it's every doll. But back then, I was a little stronger, okay? And it wasn't every doll. But that doll, it was that doll. I couldn't. Mm -mm. I didn't like being in the same room with it. You want to hear the nightmare? The nightmare I had. So we're at this house again. And we're in the laundry room. And it's like a small little laundry room. And then you walk, you come out and you walk down a hall. And there's a linen closet at the end of the hallway. Well, my mom's in the linen closet putting like towels and linens away. I am in the laundry room. Well, in this dream... There were multiple different types of Howdy Doody dolls, and all of them were like Pinocchio type alive. Like they weren't human, but they weren't just a doll sitting there. They were like possessed, probably, in my dream, I'm assuming. And I remember hearing them talking and stuff and like whispering and like I'm in there helping them do laundry and get something for my mom. And... All of a sudden they like turn around and look at me and then all of a sudden I hear a whisper that says, let's kill her. Oh, hell no. So I run out of there. This is a dream, by the way. This is my dream. I run out of there and I'm just like screaming for my mom. She's at the end of the hallway, but I can't speak. Like I can't get any noise out. I can't like breathe barely because I'm trying to run for my life. And, um... The faster I run, the slower I go, and the longer the hallway stretches, and it was just honestly horrible. I remember waking up, like, screaming in the middle of the night and being so scared. I'd run to my grandfather's room, and I would just, like, sleep in there, and, um, I wouldn't let him <laughs> go to sleep. Like, he wasn't allowed to go to sleep until I was comfortable enough to close my eyes again. Because I'll, I'll be, I'm that type of person where, like, if I close my eyes and something's, like, hitting me in my brain, I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it, and it's gonna destroy my life. Another memory that I have with my childhood and, like, something that's ghost-like or unknown or whatever is when I used to live with my mom and my dad, we lived in a trailer. And I remember I would walk out of my room in the middle of the night because I would hear music. And it wasn't, like... You know bumping it was like classical music like string quartet like old-fashioned classical music and I would it would wake me up I remember it all, always wake me up and I would go out into the kitchen and I would see these people in like old dresses and I remember thinking at the time it was like Anastasia you know when she has that scene of the people that are like ghosts and they're all dancing it kind of reminded me of that and I remember walking out and I'd always see these people dance and they, they would look at me but they would never stop dancing. They would just keep dancing and I was like so confused and I remember trying to tell my parents this over and over and like of course I'm like a little kid so they're just gonna be like oh you're just dreaming it was your imagination blah 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 blah. You know which kind of made me feel crazy you know it makes you feel crazy when someone doesn't listen like they say that like the kids are the ones who are really good at like figuring out whether or not there's a ghost you know they can be like yo this man said i'm behind you and i'm just like excuse me like so i have a hard time kind of brushing children off and being like no you're wrong you're just a child you don't know what you're talking about because like every person says that like kids see ghosts and dogs and cats and other animals like they sense them and i'm just like you calm down now another experience i have is a little triggery like it's kind of messed up but, um, so when I was younger, I had a cat, a kitten named Skittles, and it was murdered. That's all we're going to say. Someone just touched my foot. Oh, it's Remy boy. You guys want to meet Remy? This is Remy. He is a stray that came to us on Halloween. Ignore his little boo-boo on his chin. Him and Miko are still learning to get along. He is the sweetest little baby boy. Look at him. And he's a snuggler. Like, he'll just chill out with me the whole time. 
anyway, I had a kitten. Unfortunately, it passed away. And it was my first pet, like animal. And like, I really liked it. She was really sweet, really playful. I think that's what got her killed in the first place. That night, I remember getting into bed. And uh, I was very sad, obviously. I just lost a pet that I really liked. You know, she was a cute little gray tabby. She was a very sweet baby. Again, very playful. Kids like that. Kids like when like, you got a playful animal that you can just mess around with. Well, I remember laying there crying, upset because my kitten was gone. And all of a sudden, I feel what feels like something jump up on the bed, crawl up on my chest, and lay down. And I open my eyes and look down, and there's Skittles laying on my chest, purring. And I remember petting her until I fell asleep, and when I woke up the next day, she was gone. Again, these are very young experiences. I don't know how I have them like I don't know how I remember these at all it's just like crazy you know I've always remembered since an early age like having these experiences being scared especially at night um my mom has also told me a few things recently because I asked her I was like yo like I'm starting to feel crazy you know like have you experienced some things or is it just me am I like imagining stuff is this like inherited I don't know is this a ghost whisperer type deal I need to know see I never really had like an imaginary friend or anything along that lines I always just saw like I don't know saw things I don't know what to tell you I just always saw things um I can't imagine though being like someone who can see stuff all the time if it like I mean the FBI really did just say that like half this shit's real or whatever so it was like dimensions and like who's to say death isn't just another dimension we don't know you don't know till you die and even when you die and come back you don't know cuz you got so many chemicals in your brain that like it's showing you one hell of a ride you know so how are you really supposed to know unless you die? Like fully. And you know what? I can wait. There's some things that I haven't done yet that I'd like to do. Like today, for instance, I'd really like to go eat some breakfast. Because all I've had is uh, one of these bad boys. <sighs> no regrets. Ooh. Imagine being one of the kids growing up with like an imaginary friend that everyone just thinks is really an imaginary friend But it's like really ghost No, no, thanks Imagine that imagine just like everyone's like oh, that's just like his imaginary friend and then like oh, Remy just jumped off my lap <laughs> But like for real, okay Imagine having this like imaginary friend that you talk to every day that you can see everyone tells you is fake Right? And then you're just thinking that, like, you're crazy or adults just suck, which they kind of do because, like, our imagination was just beat out of us through the teenager years. High school. That's what high school is. It just kills all individuality and imagination. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. Now, I know I said most of these stories are from my childhood, but I ran out of stories and I have more makeup to do. So, we're gonna... <laughs> Fast forward to teenage years. One specific memory I have is when I was dating my first love, first boyfriend, you know, one of those where you're like crazy and stuff. Well, we were dating and we were sitting out in my living room at my mom's house. And I don't know why, but we were sitting in opposite like furniture like I was sitting in a recliner with my back to the hallway and at the end of the hallway there's my mom's room and then my ex was sitting on the couch so we weren't really next to each other I don't know why like you think we would be being like young and in love but maybe he said something stupid and I didn't want to be near him I don't know I was pretty ruthless back then I'm kind of ruthless now but 
much more understanding and compassionate. At least I'm trying to be. So we're just sitting there watching TV and like, you know when you hear like regular sounds and you're just like, oh yeah, that's that. Like there's nothing, that, that's just something you can ignore because it's just a normal sound that you hear every day within your house. Well, I hear my mom's door open and she has this latch on her door. And the latch is to keep my dog Kiara from being a jackass and pushing her door inward, therefore making the door not work and therefore my mom can't get out, which she has done several times. I hear the door unlock. So the type of lock that it is, is like one of those ones that you like lift up, slide and lift down. Like one of those like locks, okay? So you takes a second to open and like you can hear distinct clicks when it does. I'm sitting there and I hear it and I'm just like, yeah, 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 like mom's coming out of her room. I'm glad me and my ex weren't like making out on the couch, you know, I was like, ooh, like we gonna get in troubles. And then I realized my mom's not home. Okay, she went to the store. I don't know where she was. I don't know if we were home alone. We were like older teenagers, still teenagers, but like, I was either junior or senior year, so, you know. At this point, I whipped the fuck around. I'm like, uh, is the dog or something trying to push the door open? Like, uh, I'm gonna kill this bitch. She a female dog, so she really is a bitch. It's just, I didn't know what to expect when I turned around. I just thought it was like an animal trying to get into the room or get out of the room. And so I got up and turned around. <laughs> this is when I just... No, okay, this is just a bunch of no that happens next. So I get up and I turn around and I watch this door close and then I watch this fucking latch go whoop, whoop, whoop and reclose. And <sighs> no, no, thank you. Thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. I don't need any of this. So at this point, I look at my ex and I'm like, we're going to bed because it was later in the night anyway and I was just like we are going to bed right now he asked me why and I don't again I don't like talking about things like while it's still happening you know because like that makes it more real I'm not trying to make it more real I'm trying to go into denial mode and if you over here trying to make it more real for me and I'm in denial mode I'm like no man we ain't talking about it we ain't talking about it until I know I'm in a safe place we get to my bedroom and I literally just like force myself to go into like a depression sleep like you know the ones where you can just like lay there and force yourself to go to sleep and you're just like no more no more no more well at one point we both wake up in the middle of the night and before I even say this my ex is not someone who particularly believes in like this type of stuff I guess He's religious, or he was religious then, not really sure anymore, but like, I don't know if he believed in like, you know, hauntings and spirits, even though I feel like if you're religious, like, especially like Catholic or something, shouldn't you believe in ghosts? Because like, God, Son, the Holy Spirit, is that how it goes? Like, the Holy Spirit talks, anyway, whatever. We wake up, and we don't really look at each other, we don't speak to each other, like, I don't really notice him right away. Because I'm a little preoccupied at like staring blankly into this corner of my room that looks like it's a black hole that's going to swallow me. I still am uncomfortable by this to this day because I'm just like, let me explain to you why this was kind of crazy. The corner of my room was black. Like I could see you know, the shape of my furniture and stuff, except when I got to this corner of my room where it was just black, like nothing, like a void. And I just, all I remember is just like staring at it like that, like just mouth open, scared, like deer in headlights, terrified. I could not tell you how long we sat there and not even acknowledging each other or speaking to each other or anything. I can't tell you. But eventually I did 
remember like watching this dark corner lighten up and I begin to be able to see the outline of my furniture show up again which again like I didn't see before I could see everything around where it was black but not where it was black and then I watched it lighten up and it was almost like I was like released out of this hypnosis or trance or fear that I was in I just looked at my ex and I was like did you feel like something was standing there watching us and he kind of just looked at me and was like, God will protect me and like flipped over and was going to bed. And this is when I proceeded to jump from the outside of the bed to the inside. And I'm like, I don't know if he's going to do shit for me. So like, I'm going to use you as a human shield. Thanks for your sacrifice. I'm going to go put my lashes on and lipstick and unplop my hair and I'll be right back with you. Okay. <laughs> I really tried to unplop my hair and make it look nice, but it wasn't having it. So, we're doing space buns. <laughs> but this is the finished look. I hope you guys like it. Again, matchy, matchy, matchy. Usually I like to go matchy and then I'll just do like complimentary colors because I really like complimentary colors together. Thank you for watching, you know, if you like this video, hit that like, subscribe, share, comment, spread the love, spread it, spread it around. It's love season. Again, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. This is something that's fun for me to do every week, something to look forward to, especially during COVID and being quarantined. Not like I'm quarantined, quarantined, but you know, we're not really supposed to be going out and socializing. But again, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next Tuesday.